In this video, I'll be showing you guys how to create, edit, and utilize models in FinStack. A model is basically a component or group of components that you can save into FinStack's component library. Not only does it allow you to save a particular component or group of components, but it also brings along all of the properties and references, such as programs or events, that are related to that model. This basically allows the user to reuse and edit the model as many times as they need without having to recreate it each and every time. Most of the widgets and smart labels that you see in our standard graphics are actually models and were made using the same general methods that I'm about to show you. Okay, so before we begin, it's important to note that we can make a model out of generally any component or group of components in the graphics builder, but for this example, I will just be showing you the basics using two label components and one program. Okay, so I'll start off by adding some style classes to the labels to give them a nice look and feel. Uh, in my case, I'm going to name each label uniquely so I can reference them individually from my program at a later step. The label to the left will be my name label and the label to the right will be my value label. Now that I have them named, positioned and styled, I will go ahead and create a group out of them. Next, I'll name the group my smart label and add the same thing as a unique tag onto the group so I can run my program on it. Next, I'll need to create a new program which will eventually gather and populate the data onto our model. The first thing I'll do here is create a point variable which will dynamically grab the ID of whichever point is eventually bound to the model. This will keep the model dynamic. Now I'll copy in my code, which in this example basically finds the labels based on their names, and then updates the text values by grabbing the points navname and curval. I'll save the program and close it out. Now that we have our group and program set up, we can save it as a model by selecting the group and clicking on the Save button in the Properties panel. As soon as the model is saved, it will create a brand new model component in the components panel. To demonstrate this, I'll go back to my VAV graphic and scroll all the way down to my model category within the components panel. At the very bottom there is my custom model called My Smart Label. You can drag your model in just like any other component and it will instantly populate. So not only did the model bring in the group of components that I saved, but it also automatically brought in the program that was referencing the model when it was saved. As you can see here, the My Smart Label program is now available in the list of programs on this graphic. Okay, so now I can test and use my model by binding a point to it. My program seems to be working great, so I will go ahead and duplicate the model and bind a, a different point to it, to show that it's dynamic. Now that we have the model loaded, we can save the graphic and view it live. Okay, so so far we've created a reusable model that can be brought into any graphic. And as it is right now, we have two copies of the same model being used live on the graphic itself. Now let's go over how to edit a model. I'm going to demonstrate this using a side-by-side -side view of the graphics builder and the live graphic to truly show you guys how convenient it is to edit a model that is already in use on a live graphic. To begin editing your model, I would recommend opening a new work page within the graphics builder so you can focus only on the model that you want to edit. Once the new page is opened, open the assets panel and select your model to begin editing. To help visually show you the power of editing a model, I'm going to simply change the color on my value label within the model. Now that I've made my change, I'll simply select the group itself, go down to the properties menu, and hit the save button to update the existing model. Now here is where having a model really pays off. As you recall in an earlier step, I've already saved a graphic using the original version of that model, which was using a green color, right? That was before I made this recent change. So the beauty of this is I don't actually have to go into each of my graphics and, and you know, drag out a new model. 
All I have to do is refresh the page and voila, the model automatically references and loads the latest version of the model. So if you've already created a hundred graphics using the same model and you suddenly need to make a change to the model, all you have to do is edit and save the model file and it will automatically update every copy of the model that's already in use. Another great part about models is that they can be downloaded and used across any of your projects as is. To download a model, all you need to do is open the Folio app, select the backup option, run a search filter for a fin model, select the model you want to download, and then hit backup to save it onto your desktop. Once you've got it backed up or saved on your desktop, you can transfer it any which way just like a regular file. And when you're ready to upload it to another FinStack server, all you have to do is simply open up the folio on that project and select the restore option. This is a huge feature that can save you hours of engineering time. Imagine creating all of your common models and uploading them onto all of your future projects. It really saves you a lot of time, especially when it comes to graphics. So this is one of our favorite features and we hope you like it too. That pretty much covers all of the basics on how to create, edit, utilize, and back up a basic model. But before we close off this tutorial, I would like to add in a bit of a more advanced topic when it comes to creating models, especially models with labels or components that you would like to be able to dynamically stretch or be dynamically adjusted by the user when creating the graphic. The model as it is right now cannot be stretched. So here's how you can make a model stretchable. I would first start by selecting the overall group and setting its width and height to use percentages instead of hard-coded pixels. I would use 100% on both for the overall group so it fills in the model space completely. Once that's done, you'll also need to set the position and size of the individual labels and objects within the group. So for this example, I'm going to make my name label take up 60% width and 100% height of the group. Let's keep the X and Y at 0% so it remains pinned at the top left corner within the group. Now for the value label, let's place the X location to be at the 60% axis of the group and the Y to be at the 0% axis. The width in this case will fill in the remaining 40% of the group and the height will be at 100%. With the percentages set, the model should now be able to stretch. Before I save this one, I'm going to change the color to the default blue and rename the group to a new name. Once that's done, I'll go ahead and use the Save As button to create a completely new model. Now when I go back to my original graphic, I can scroll down the components layer and since I did a save as instead of a save, a new model will appear for me to use. Once I drag it out, I can now stretch this model into any size I need. That's pretty much it for this basic tutorial on how to create, edit, use, and back up your models. I hope this last section has helped inspire some potential ideas for you to use in your own projects. Be sure to keep an eye out for more advanced tutorials on how to make some more complex models. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe to our channel and stay up to date with our latest and greatest content. Thanks for watching.